really am and kind of surprised at what the Lord has, has directed me to, but, and I hope it makes sense to you. It, uh, gee, you, you probably will have to follow me pretty close. It's kind of, I think today's going to be kind of like one of those movies. If you come in five minutes after it started, you're lost the whole thing. And, uh, but I hope not. In Jesus' name, we hope not. Uh, I guess my title to study today, it is, uh, it is uh, What Are the Deep Things of God? What is the Wisdom of Man? Because the Bible said that by wisdom man knew not God. Uh, because men are smart. I've never known anyone to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost who was the kind of person that always had to figure everything out. Amen. How's this going to happen? What happened? What should I do? Blah, blah, blah. It, uh, it, when you're dealing with God, it's all, it's all based on repentance and receiving. And just faith. I don't care how it works. Jesus said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. It goes where it wants to go. You, can't, you don't know where it's coming, and you don't know where it's going. It just comes. Amen. Anybody ever, anybody, and somebody said, well, yeah, the scientists have figured all that out. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, if you're like me, you've been standing out. Shane, I'm going to ask you this question. If you're like me, you're standing outside working, and the wind is blowing out of the west just like this all day long, right? Then all of a sudden you step back from the house and all of a sudden, boom, something hits you. A big wind from the east just comes and whams. Anybody ever have that happen? Where'd that come from? The wind blowing out of the west or the northwest or the southwest or whatever. And then all of a sudden you get this big puff of wind right out of the east. That comes, you know, the wind blows where it wants to go. There's nothing, there's no, nothing to stop it. It does what it wants to do. That's what, Jesus is saying, there's nothing to stop me. I'm going to do what I want to do. Where I want to go, I'm going to go. If I want to fill someone with my spirit, I'm going to fill them. If I don't, I don't. Amen. Well, Jesus wants to fill everybody. You know, and, uh, well, you know, I'm sure he does. That's why he came and died on the cross. But there's a, there's a scripture that says, you know, uh, God, speaking of, of uh, Esau and, and Jacob, you know, everybody says God loves everybody, but not, not according to scripture, you know, because he said, Esau, uh, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. God said that. I hate Esau, but I love Jacob. But he, here's the deal. We understand it, that God, God, even though he said he hated Esau, still blessed him. Because Esau became a mighty nation. And, uh, and uh, of course, he did not have the heavenly blessing that, that Jacob had. And though Jacob went about it the wrong way, he sought it with his, own, his whole heart. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things I've gone about uh, in trying to serve and live for God the wrong way, according to a lot of people. But I'm going to tell you, I did it with my whole heart. I've done it with my whole heart. Why? Because I desire to have God more than this other stuff. Amen. I want God more than this other stuff. I may, not be, I may not be doing it right, Brother Dave, but I'm doing it the best I know how, according to what I've learned in the Word of God. Amen. So, let me, uh, let me go on. Uh, there are limitations to man's wisdom. Amen. Limitations. We don't know. You know, you ever had the doctor come in and he, he explained the whole procedure to you? And then when it's over, he comes out and he says, man, I don't know how that happened. You know, because there's limitations. And when you're dealing with God and spiritual things, there, there, are, great, there, uh, uh, there are great limitations to man. Uh, we have to understand that the, uh, there is ultimate wisdom in God Almighty. And his wisdom is not like our wisdom. He doesn't make sense to us most of the time. It doesn't just like that, what I just told you. It doesn't make sense. The wind blow it where it listed. What does that have to do with anything? Amen. Really, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it lets you know that God is sovereign. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God is sovereign. He chooses. He chooses. Why? Brother Potts, uh, what do you mean? Well, the Bible said, No man cometh unto the Father but the Spirit draw him. So what does that mean? Well, it does, does it... Does it mean that God's Spirit is drawing everyone? No. It doesn't. No man cometh unto the Father, but the Spirit draw him. God is not drawing everyone to him. Now, there are times in people's lives when God may draw them, but there are times in people's lives when God is not drawing them. Amen. That's the reason the, uh, uh, the Bible said 
uh, seek God while, you, while he may be found of you. Why, at that moment when God is drawing you, that's when you need to seek him. Because you don't know if he's going to come back and draw anymore. Amen. The ultimate wisdom of God is, uh, is, uh, is, at, is at variance with the wisdom of man. Uh, the third thing I'll talk about is, is that it's God's spirit. It is, uh, uh, God's wisdom is revealed by his Holy Spirit and not by man's wisdom. In John chapter 11, verse 13, the Bible says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, letting us know that this is letting us know, this is not the Scripture now, this is me talking, that God is letting us know that God's desire is for us to know him partially, a little bit. Some. That's not, what, that's not what he said. That he will lead you and guide you into all truth about God. God wants us to know him in his fullness. <laughs> it, really, he does. He wants us to know him in his fullness. Amen. To be acquainted with him in his fullness. But now you cannot know God in his fullness if you don't take the word of God in its fullness. It's like those preachers who believe you can be saved without the Holy Ghost or being baptized and, and, uh, and all of that. I, I got a study I was going to do, but I, God changed my mind on, on uh, what it means to be baptized. And we're still working on what it means to be uh, born again on Wednesday night. Amen. I hope you all are getting something out of that. I, I really do. But uh, there's a whole lot more to it than just one, one time action or one time experience. Or, uh, there's a lot more to it. It's a lifetime. Of learning, we, we can we can learn about God all of our lives. We'll never know all of Him, Amen. But if we try to find Him in our wisdom and not His, that's the reason that I when I tell you read and study your Bible, do it prayerfully. When you go to your Bible, pray about it. God, show me, Lord. Prayerfully means while you're reading His Word, show me, Lord, what this Word means. Don't don't just let me read the words, but let me feel the Spirit of the Word. Because God's word is alive. That's the reason that, I don't know, I'm sure it's happened to some of you. It's happened to me quite often. Is I've read something that I've read before and it, and it doesn't speak to me. But when I read it this time, it jumps off the page right in my face. Amen. Because, you know, there's a time for everything. Amen. There's a time for every season, you know. But there's a time for everything. The Bible said, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how we walk with God. It was not time for me to see that before. Now God is showing it to me because now it's time for me to see it because now it's time for me to receive it. Because God cannot give you all of him because you couldn't receive all of him. That's the reason it has to be a little here and a little there. Amen. A little here and a little there. Amen. It'd, it'd, it'd blow your brain. You just It'd be like, you know, uh, this movie I saw one time is a funny movie where the aliens took a human and they put him in this machine and put this thing over his head and it was to give him uh, all this wisdom, knowledge, knowledge of the universe. They were giving him all this knowledge and it was going and the guy was going blah, 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 and all of a sudden his head went <laughs> That's what would <laughs> Well anyway, all right. <laughs> so the spirit searches all things. The spirit of God searches all things. We are we talked about this, but this is what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, we're dealing with the church at Corinth. What a crazy bunch of people they were, man. They were, they were crazy. Uh, because they go into church and people walk in. That's the reason I, I was telling Brother Scott, uh, we want to get this thing closed off so that we can close it off before service. And those who come in can come in and have coffee and talk and have a good time and then come in and pray. Okay, so we do that, and if we have visitors, we want to encourage them to come in and get a cup of coffee or, or just to talk, you know, and introduce them to each other uh, because uh, we don't want to be like the church, at, the Corinthian church, because people would come in off the street and everybody, everyone in the church would be in there going, blah, 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 What are you doing? I'm speaking in tongues. Everybody's in there speaking in tongues. And nobody's understanding what they're saying, and so they all go outside because these people are crazy. That's the reason 
Paul was not preaching against speaking in tongues. He was preaching for wisdom about it. Okay? When he said, uh, you know, I'd rather hear five words in a tongue that I can understand and 10,000 in a tongue I can't. Because if, if the, if the, uh, if the symbol or the uh, trumpet doesn't make a certain sound and the sound is uncertain, who's going to know where to go to battle? If, if you go in and you can't understand what people are saying, come on, have a little wisdom, folks. Now, there are some who have used that scripture to say, see, you're not supposed to talk in tongues. That's not what he's talking about. And the church, it, 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 the Corinthian church was crazy in that sense that they had... Uh, just went way too far. I've been, uh, I've been studying, I've been doing a lot of searching on the internet about older men working out because I don't want to hurt myself. Okay, I don't want to be in there doing something stupid and, and next thing you know I'm walking around like this the rest of my life. And so I'm watching and I saw a video that says men who have taken it too far and they show these young men with these big old huge arms and they show them when they're a little bit little or older and it looks like Somebody took something and a knife and blew the tire out. You know, that's what happens when you do something and you just go crazy with it. After a while, it wears you out. After a while, it ruins you. That's the reason it scares me for people. They want to, you know, the Lord told me this morning, I was talking to the Lord. I said, God, I want to make some noise today. I'd like for the church to be noisy. And the Lord said, I want the church to be quiet. I said, but Lord, you didn't have it to praise your people. He said, yeah, but noise is not necessarily praise. Noise is just people going, woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Sometimes praise has to come from in here. Now, I like to get loud. Y'all know I do. But sometimes praise has got to, it, if, it, if it just comes from here, it's not praise at all. It's just you making noise. It's got to come from down inside. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the inner man. So, anyway... Amen. I don't know where all that came from, but it came from somewhere. For you to understand that, that Jesus, that God wants us to know him in the fullness, in fullness, not just in part. The search is all things, yea, uh, his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. The deep things of God are revealed by his Holy Spirit not by worldly insight. So that's the reason Brother Dave, you and I were talking, and I said something about theologians. You know, and I read some of their stuff, but I'm going to tell you, when it comes, when it comes to the spiritual things, when it comes to the basic uh, teaching of the Bible, they're great. You know, how to live, how to get along with people and all that. Great, wonderful teaching. But when it comes to the spiritual things, the spiritual aspects of it, it's like, it's like, dry bones it's like death because they don't know understand that i want to explain to you how you can be saved by 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 just doing this and and it's like well that really don't make sense to me well why doesn't it make sense to you brother well because i've been filled with the holy ghost and that makes sense but what you're saying don't make any sense i've been baptized in his name and what you're saying doesn't make sense to me why because the spirit of truth lives in me and thereby, with the spirit of truth, know we the difference between truth and the difference between error. That's the reason I told, uh, I told someone the other day, I'm, I don't want to tell you who, uh, because they might be watching this video, but they'll know when I mention it, that, uh, yeah, uh, we accept, we, we, we love people, no matter what their lifestyle, no matter how they live, we love them and we want them to be saved, but we cannot accept them in that without expecting them to be delivered from that. So in other words, it's, it's like, uh, oh God, you know, man's wisdom says we got to go along to get along. But Jesus said, are you also offended? Will you also go away? It's because, see, uh, if you're offended too, because about when Jesus said, "Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood," man's wisdom said, "Oh, you're crazy, man! You, that's crazy." But he wasn't talking about a physical act. He was talking about something happening in the spirit. And when man looked at it through their wisdom, they they got offended and they said, "Well," and they all went away. And Jesus didn't change it. He just turned to his disciples and said, "Will ye also go away?" 
Because I said this, will you also go away? Because I said what I said, are you going to leave too? And, and, and the smartest thing I think that Peter ever said was, said, well, where are we going? Where do we have to go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. He was smart enough to know that Jesus had the words of eternal life. That's the kind of people I'm praying God will send to this church, that they'll be smart enough to know what the truth is and what is error. Amen. Amen. But you never know it by man's wisdom. Amen. The deep things of God are revealed by the Holy Spirit. Not by worldly wisdom. Amen. Not by worldly wisdom. 1 Corinthians 2.11 For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man? See, I can tell you, we can sit down, the men of this church can all sit down, and every one of us can agree and identify on things in our lives. I know, Brother Shane, you're young and we're old, but we can do it. So it's a stair step up, Shane, on all the way up to me, the old old guy up here. So that bounce over to Brother Dave. But all of us have the same feelings. We all have the same desires. We all have the same wants. Now, we may not have the same desire for the same thing. You know, uh, Brother Dave wants a Jeep with a plow. I want a tractor with a plow. But it's the same want. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. It's just different, represented differently. And uh, we know that because we have the spirit of man in us. And there's some other things I could say, but I'm not going to, uh, that all of us suffer with because we have the spirit of man in us. And we know that. We don't have to, I don't have to go and, and look you in the face and say, uh, you know, I, I know you're suffering with this the re because I, we know. What man knoweth but the spirit of man. You ladies are the same way. You ladies can look at each other and say, yeah, I know what she's thinking. You know, she's thinking about my shoes. And what she's thinking is not about your shoes, it's about your coat. <laughs> but she's thinking about something. You, you got it right, mostly because she's thinking about something you got on your body, some, some type of apparel. I don't know. I, that's just something I heard. But so what, what, what man knoweth the things of man but the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. We don't know the things of God, but the Spirit of God. So what's he saying? No man without the Spirit of God can know the things of God. You may think you know them, but your wisdom is leading you down a trail. So we go back to the church at Corinth, the, the Corinthian church. We go back to the church at Corinth where uh, not only did they have a problem with all the tongue talking, once they got that all settled, then they had these people come in who were smart, who were wise in the words of men. So what does that mean? That you ever, you ever uh, and I'm, I'm pretty basic. I don't try to go and get flamboyant and, and go out and try to understand it, you know, uh, the meaning of all these words and and how to speak with, with that type of intelligence, you know, using words that uh, most of us in here probably really wouldn't understand, but we'd agree with because, you know. Uh, but that's what Paul said they were doing. They had these, they had men come in who were very intelligent using words, and they could take their words, and they could, and they could uh, woo people and cause people to go, wow, oh, wow, he's so, he's so learned, he's so spiritual because of what he's saying. No, 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 no. That's not what Paul, Paul said, hey, that's the wrong way to go, folks. That's man's wisdom. You don't judge it by, by the wisdom of their words. You've got to judge it by the, the express feeling of what their words give you. It's that feeling that God puts in you, that, that knowledge that, hey, this is of God. But there are so many people who are not filled with the Spirit who can be led astray by men with enticing words of wisdom. You know, I wish I could learn how to smile with every word. I don't, never have been able to do that. No one can know God by his wisdom or his own power. Why? Because God is a spirit. God is a spirit. There are people, do you know, there are 
Christians today who deny the spirit world. How can you deny the spirit world when the Bible said that God is a spirit? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because flesh, no flesh is going to glory in his sight. So you've got to worship him by spirit and you've got to worship him by truth. So you've got to have them both. Spirit without truth will lead you down the wrong trail. And truth without spirit will make you a lawgiver. That's God, you ladies better let that hair grow out and you better not ever see y'all wearing no pants again and then get them things down there, get them dresses and skirts down to them ankles and get them sleeves down to them. That, that, <laughs> some of us have lived that, right? Some of us haven't. God bless you if you haven't. But listen, that don't save nobody. That's men without the spirit, all they have is truth. And it's their truth, not God's. That's the problem. That's the thing we've got to understand. We have got to realize that it's got to be God's truth, not ours. Because if a man comes in here and he's full of high excitement and spiritual and all that, but he preaches something that's not, thus saith the word of God, you've got to be able to judge that. No, I'm sorry. Well, Brother Potts, he was great. Yeah, well, he did a good job, but... He's not on what the Bible says. Not on it. Because it's man's wisdom. Let me go on. We must guard against these things that come from outside the church. Negative influence of people in disbelief and doubt and fear. We've got to get rid of that thing. We've got to guard against that. We've got to keep that out of the church. These things are those things that will creep in and separate the child of God from God. They will separate the spirit of God from the spirit of man. Why? Because they're outside influence, negative influence. Okay? Think about this. Uh, and y'all forgive me, but it's the truth. There was a time in my life when I found out about, uh, when I would find out about the death of a person, that it would affect me deeply, especially someone that I knew and loved. But because of the negative influence of the world, those things don't affect me the way they used to. Well, what do you mean? I have become, what's the word? Immune. What's the word? Give me a good word for that. Somebody, shout it out. You know, I've become, I've, 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 it's got to the point where some of those things don't, they don't affect me like they used to. Why? Because the world has jaded me, I guess. Maybe that's the word. I don't know. We've got to be, we got to guard against that negative influence. You know, we go home and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I like movies with action. If I'm going to watch a movie, I want it to have action. If it's a cartoon like, you know, I want my wife and I watched a, a, a movie. You guys need to watch it. It's called Yes Day. About a mother and a father and three children. It's got everything you want in it except for cursing and nudity. It's a great story. It's a day when the parents say, we're going to say yes to everything that you want today. And so they go out and they go to this big thing and they do all this stuff and it's so cool. Mom shows them and she's not this grouchy old woman that always is demanding and all of that. You know, God gives us a yes day sometimes. Why? Because we need a break every now and then. I mean, you got you, you to understand that. And uh, we got to be careful that we don't have yes day every day because when you're working with Jesus, when you're walking with Jesus, there's got to be some no days too. You know, uh, and so anyway, you go back to it and it's this show and it had all this action in it and there wasn't no fighting or killing. It was just people doing crazy stuff, the whole thing. And I laughed, my wife laughed and when it was over, she said, wow, that was good. That's the best show we've seen in a long time because, you know, I've turned something on the other day and I thought it was good and in the first three minutes there was... Blank, blank, and blank. And I said, well, that's enough of that. They ruin everything. They ruin everything. Ruin it. With their foul 
mouths and their filth and their nudity and their sex scenes and all that. They ruin everything. But we become, uh, we get to the point where it doesn't bother us anymore. We're immune to it. You know, and then we get to where we, and I don't know about you guys, but we get to where that, well, there was only five cuss words in this movie. Not a big deal. And it's, then we get to the point where there's only 11 cuss words. Cut, we're counting them. Only 11 cuss words. 15 cuss words in this movie and three nudity scenes. Not a, you see what I'm saying? You see how it creeps in and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we allow more and more and more and more and more where we need to say, no, that's enough. I've had enough. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to bring it into my home. I'm not going to bring it into my life because when it gets into your life, it's there. You ever, you ever had a song that you hate that you sing all the time? Huh? Come on. Especially, you know when I hate them the worst is when it's bedtime. We've got to guard against that stuff, and the only way to do it is say no at the beginning. I'm not, you know, no. No, I'm not. Amen. In the sep- second chapter of the first epistle that Paul wrote to the, ch- uh, to the church at Corinth, <clears throat> Paul is is talking to them about human wisdom. Human wisdom was was clarified by Paul by being lofty speech of wisdom. When he's talking about Paul, this is the lofty speech of wisdom. In in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and this is Paul's answer to it, he said, I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring unto you the testimony. I didn't come to you uh, to wow you with my words of wisdom, but I came to you to preach to you Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. His blood was shed for you, and you need to repent of your sins and be baptized in his name and filled with his spirit. Because it was men by wisdom who created the doctrine of the Trinity. It was man's wisdom who created that doctrine, not God's. They did it 300 years. And 25 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, man's wisdom said, oh, we've got to, we've got to tell everybody who God is. And for 300 years, they had been telling everybody who God is, but they had to change it. Now, some people are going to be upset. There's probably some people out there that are going to watch this video today and be upset, but it's true. The doctrine of Trinity was created by a group of people who worshipped idols. <laughs> it was. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. History will show you. I don't have to. The Bible will show you. History will show you. You know? And they, they decided that they were going to make it the way they wanted it to. That's the wisdom of man because they wanted it to fit their wisdom. They did not want to fit God's wisdom. The rich man walks into the church and says, I want to be baptized, but I don't want to get in the water. Sprinkling. Here, come up here. I'm going to shake a little water on you. This is holy water. Because I said, Jesus, bless this water. Here. (laughs) He's not baptized. He's still filthy. Because according to the word of God, the word baptism comes from a Greek word called baptizo, which means to be immersed. The Bible said we are buried with him in baptism. That means we got to go under just like he did. Amen. But though, no, no, you know, man's wisdom said, no, 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 you don't need that. And to make man, people come into the church and they see all these people there crying and praying, and, oh, God, I'm just not going there where tears running down their face. And some of them are in the intercession. They say, well, we don't want to do this. You mean you got to do this to be saved? Well, they're doing it because they're heartbroken because of their sins. It's not demanded of them to do that. If you're heartbroken of your sins, you don't have to be snotting and, and all that stuff, but you do need to be heartbroken and praying and asking God to forgive you of your sins. Right? But then the, the man's wisdom says, well, you know, that's okay here. Repeat after me. That's man's wisdom, not God's. Man's wisdom. Man's wisdom did that. Not God's. If it was God's wisdom, it would have started at the beginning on the day of Pentecost. 
And Peter would have said, repeat after me. And Peter would have said, be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And Peter would have said, as soon as you repent of your sins, you're filled with his spirit. Peter would have said all of that stuff. But he didn't. He said, you got to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then whenever that stopped working, they started saying, well, it's the gift of tongues. No, it's not. It's the gift of the Holy Ghost. Two different things. That's man's wisdom. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not within, with excellency of speech or the wisdom of, of, uh, or of, of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of Christ. See, well, here's what happens. They bring out plausible words of wisdom. Plausible. Anybody ever watch, uh, what's that word? Uh, what was that show uh, with the two guys? It just left me. The two guys that are always doing these experience, experiments, Mythbusters. Anybody watch Mythbusters? And they would, they would do things, and they said, well, this is plausible. It didn't work the way they said it would work, but it's plausible. This is what he's talking about. They, they, this is what happened in the church at Corinth. People came and they, with their, their wonderful words of astonishment, and, they, and, and they, they would go in and they would try to win people over, not to God, but to themselves. Amen. Because it, it, plausible is a statement seeming, uh, seeming to be a reasonable uh, answer to a problem. This is what this is what this is what Webster says about pro, plausible. Man's skilled at producing persuasive arguments, especially expressly intended to deceive. And then at the bottom in quotations it said, a plausible liar. Well, it's possible. You think of the man on the cross that Jesus said, at the end of the day you're going to be with me in paradise. And it's possible that all of us could be just like that man on the cross. No, that was one time for that one man, and it would happen today uh, that Jesus, before the death of Jesus Christ, under the old covenant, and there's a whole Bible study that I could go into on that, but you see, plausible men who, who, will, who will say, well, that's plausible, uh, let's just base our faith on that man. And so that caused people to stop believing that people need the Holy Ghost because they say, well, you've got to remember the thief on the cross. You know, Jesus saved the thief on the cross without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Anyway, I'm just talking about the wisdom. This is the way things get all screwed up when men start thinking without praying. When men start thinking without praying, they mess everything up, folks. When I start doing things at home without praying, I mess everything up. If you don't believe me, ask her. She'll tell you. Got to pray about that stuff before I do it. Amen. Got to pray about it. And listen, the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth, but it will not lead you away from Scripture. Will not lead you away from Scripture. So when the church was born, it was born in Acts, and it didn't die in Acts. It's still alive today. And the truth that was preached then is the same truth that needs to be preached now, and it's the Word of God. Amen. He, he brought out these things, plausible arguments, you know. The men come in and they're this. God, have mercy. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4 says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. He didn't come to wow you and woo you and and cause you to think I'm somebody. I came to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, was working in me to talk to you and to touch you and to touch your heart. You know it's true. Amen. <laughs> Human wisdom. Boasting of having uh, some unique or mystical knowledge. That's what they do. It's what they do. I know God. It's like, God rest his soul. I loved the man. I listened to him on and off for 30 years. But it's like, uh, 
uh, Rush Limbaugh. With talent on loan from God. That's what he would say. And, uh, and uh, you know, and it's sad when you think about it that God did loan him, God did give him his talent. I believe that that talent should have been used for preaching the gospel. But, you know, God has his way with everything, and I'm not downing him. I loved the man. I thought he was a great, I listened to him. I believed 99, what was it, 99.8% of everything he said was true, provable. It's God. But it doesn't say that doesn't save you. Only Jesus Christ can save your soul, and there's only one way to Him. If 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 what we if what we believe is true, there's only one way to Him. Amen. But man's wisdom say, well, we ought to be able to go this way. No, 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 no. We've got to do what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. You know. If I was hanging on the cross with Jesus and I said, Lord, forgive me, I would say I want to be like the man on the cross. But I'm not hanging on the cross with Jesus. I'm living today, 2,000 plus years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I've got to find what Jesus told the church after he left this world that they need to do to be saved. So what did he tell them? If the question is the same, the answer's got to be the same. Read Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and 39 if you want to find out, those of you out there in the world. Amen. Verse number, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 5. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's why I came preaching to you the way I did, because I want your faith to stand in the power of God and not in the wisdom of man, because men will fail you. Men will fail you. Ask some of the people that have been here. I failed them in one way or another, and I don't know. I didn't do it purposefully. I didn't just come out here purposefully to fail people. But you see, you can't satisfy every person. You can't be the where for all with every person. And, and it's, it's hard for this younger generation to accept uh, things that are fact. It really is. There are no definites in this new generation of people. It's definite. My wife and I were listening to that, what's his name, Ben Shapiro guy. And he was, the interview with him, and, and uh, man, they were, they were, I don't know if they were praising him or about ready to stone him, but he said, I'm not going to call a man who is genetically a man a woman. I don't care what you say. You know? But, but I know people who are Christians who would say, well, what's wrong with that? That lets me know that the deceitfulness of this world has crept into their lives. They're not going to go to hell any faster than a, a, a murderer or a liar or a cheater, but they're going to go, and, and they need to be saved. See, unless you, people who don't know, it, it, it's like trying to save a... A, an alcoholic who's not ready to quit drinking. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You can't save them. You can't make them stop drinking unless you put them on a desert island somewhere where there's nothing to drink. But as long as you put them in a town where there's a few liquor stores, they're going to drink. But when they get enough of it, when they've had enough of it, when they've said, I've done, I'm done, I don't want to do this anymore, then they'll quit, and they'll let you help them. Amen. Man, praise God. Let me go on. I'm getting crazy here. That your faith, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Human wisdom did not accept the things of the Spirit. Human wisdom will never accept the things of the Spirit. Amen. Listen to what I said, verse 14 of chapter 2, 1 Corinthians. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Woo! 
That's foolish. You want me to go up there and get in that water and be dunked in the water? What good does that do me? Is that, what does that do for me? I'm just getting wet. No, you're not. Well, you are just getting wet because you don't believe. But to those who believe, it is for the remission of sins. It is, it is for an answer to a good conscience toward God. Let's just, let me read all the rest of this. Neither can be known, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So let me read it all together. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. Amen. Spiritually discerned. So we look at people, we look at people who, we look, at, we look, we look out into the world and we see people who never go to church, Never read their Bible. And the only kind of prayer they pray is, Lord, bless this food, or now lay me down to sleep. And when you try to talk to them about the Lord, me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. People in the scriptures or people in church who are unlearned will go to that kind of person, and they will listen to them talk. They never go to church, they never read their Bible, they never pray. But they have got this way of saying, well, you know, I talk to the Lord every day when I'm at work. and When I sit down to eat, I tell the Lord, I say, Lord, bless this food, and I go to sleep. And, and you know, I only get drunk on weekends, so that's not a big deal. And, well, me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. And I think that uh, as long as I'm a good person, you know, I'm not cheating or stealing or lying. I'm not killing anybody. I think, I'm, and, the, and the sad part of it is the weak Christian who doesn't really know will sit there and go, well, yeah, you know, I think that's right. But then you take some knucklehead like me. <laughs> that will tell them, well, that's all well and good. But have you got the Holy Ghost yet? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Did you know the Bible says, and when you say that, man, that's when their spirit will, that's when the spirit of man will rise up in them. I don't want to hear that. I've done it many times. Well, did you know that, and I've been nice and friends, and did you know the Bible says? Do you know what the Bible says about this? Doesn't matter. I know what I know. I got to walk with God, and that's all that matters to me. Okay. Have a good day. That's all you can do. You can't help them. Why? Because they, have, they are living by their own wisdom, by their own knowledge, what they think. And it's not what I think. Listen, listen, folks, listen. If it was up to me and my carnality, in my carnality, I would have chose a, a, a whole bunch of different paths to go than the one I'm on right now. If I was that kind of person who could not see past this life, and all I can see is what I get in this life. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Let me go on. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Amen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can be known, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. God's wisdom is divine. It is the ultimate wisdom. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7, but we speak that the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So listen, just put it all in a nutshell. God decided this is what he was going to do before he ever created the earth. Before he ever, before he ever spoke, let there be light. He said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the earth. I'm going to create all the fish, the bile, and, 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 and I'm going to create all this stuff, and I'm going to create man in my image, and I'm going to give him, a, I'm going to give him a, a, an eternal soul, and then I'm going to let the devil do what he does, and I'm going to let him have to deal with it, and they're going to fight it out, and there's going to be a big battle going on on earth and heaven, and we're going to do all this stuff. See, God, this, God listen, folks, <laughs> 
God's not surprised by anything. The devil didn't surprise the Lord God. Why? Because Jesus, God said that the devil was a liar from the beginning. When I created him, he was a liar. And I created him to be a liar so that he could come and deceive the world so that I could take out of the world a people who would choose me over themselves. Amen. And I am going to save those who want to be saved enough to give themselves to me completely, 100%, and those who do not are going to go to hell. I didn't make hell for them. I made it for the angels of the devil and him. I made it for him. But because they loved themselves more than they loved me, hell has enlarged itself. So you see, God knows all this stuff. It's not a trick to him. It's not foolish. It's not, he wasn't fooled. He knew what he was doing from the beginning when he made the earth. Some of us are going to be saved. Some of us are not. And it, but, but it's not because God said you can't be saved. It's because you chose not to be saved. Let's move on real quickly. I, I'm going over time. I'm sorry. This is a long Bible study. Amen. Two and seven, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. This is what William Barclay said. He was a famous theologian guy, you know, William Barclay. This is how he describes the natural man. He is a man who lives as though nothing beyond the physical life, that there is nothing beyond this physical life and there are no needs other than material needs, whose values, whose values are all physical and material. That's the natural man. That's these guys are out there like, these guys like Bill Gates and these guys that are doing nothing but they're heaping up millions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars and, and they're buying up all this land and they're doing all this stuff because nothing matters to them except what they get. All that matters in their life is what they get while they're here because when they're gone, they're gone. That's what they think. That's the natural man. That's the way it is. A man like that cannot understand spiritual things. A man who only operates in the physical cannot even begin to 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 uh, to fathom what is the spiritual depths that are in God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the channel through which God has chosen to reveal His truth to those who see Him, who search for Him, who are looking for Him. When God chose Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees, He chose him because he was searching for something greater than himself. He chose him because he was looking for something greater than himself. There's got to be something out there. There's got to be something greater. God said, I can use him. Are you looking for something greater than yourself? Are you looking for a better way to live than you're living? Are you looking for something that's more than what you are? Are you looking for something that's eternal and satisfying to the soul? Is your soul satisfied with where you are? Are you happy where you're at? All is good? Don't need anything else? Well, then go ahead. But I'm not. I'm not happy with this life. I'm looking for a, a, a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm looking for a mansion over in glory land. I'm looking for a place that Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. I want to go there. I don't want to live in this world anymore, any longer than I have to. I want to live here as long as God wants me to be, and I, but I want to go when he's ready for me to go, and I want to go there to be with him. Amen. Let's all stand. Man, I could go for another hour, and I know y'all got to eat. Amen. Somebody's going to. Somebody's going to be losing weight here in a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, Paul said, For what man knoweth the things of man, uh, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man? That's what he said. Save the spirit of man. I read this earlier, but I put it here for a reason. Which is in him, that spirit of man which is in him. Even the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. 
So you don't know, you're not going to know the, the things of God unless the Spirit of God shows you those things. What are the deep things of God? I'm going to tell you the deepest thing of God is this, Jesus Christ. That is the fullness of his depth. That is the, the creation that he made so that he could robe himself in that flesh and walk among his creation and be a part of his creation and know what it felt like to be his creation so that he could be a, 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 a merciful high priest uh, after the order of Melchizedek, the Bible said, so that he could see us in our infirmities and he could forgive us of our sins when we don't deserve forgiveness. That's the God we said. We don't deserve forgiveness. But he gave us forgiveness because he created us. We are the apple of his eye. He loves us. And so that's why he wants to forgive us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Isn't God good? That's Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. Paul said, declaring unto you the testimony. That's what Jesus came to do. To declare unto us the testimony of God. In John 18 and 37, Jesus told Pilate, when he answered him as he stood before him in judgment, Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou sayest, Pilate said, Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? And I'm sure Pilate, in man's wisdom, was standing there, Sister Corrine, thinking, What? Is he doing here if he's the king of the Jews? What is he doing here? You see, man could not understand that Jesus did not come to build a kingdom on this earth. That's coming later. But he came to rescue the souls that were in darkness and to rescue all of us. That's what he came for. Jesus said, Thou sayest I am a king, and to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I may bear witness unto the truth. Jesus bearing witness unto the truth. What's the truth? The truth is we all need to be saved. The truth is we all need to be filled with His Spirit. The truth is we all need to repent of our sins, turn our back on this world, turn our back on sin, and walk toward Jesus Christ. That's the truth. We need to get in the Word of God and study what the Word says. Because it's not telling me anything different than what it will tell you. I don't have a different Bible than anybody else, although there are new Bibles going out now that don't have all the Scriptures in them. I won't buy a new Bible. Because you can't trust it. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, Sister Sanders is going to bring uh, the uh, prayer shawl. We're going to anoint it with oil. Do you have it? or? And we're all going to gather around. Let's all gather around up here. We're going to pray for this. Oh, yeah, we can do that. We'll come back there. And we'll pray with Sister Karen. And we're going to pray over this shawl. And she's going to take it home put it over her legs when she sits in her chair. God's going to warm them up.
Joyfully we reign.